So I woke up to five messages and three missed calls from Lola this morning. I'm not really surprised that I haven't heard from anybody else. It's the same story as last year, I guess. Just everyone was so patronising after Will left, it was driving me insane. So it's not exactly like I wanted to talk to anyone else. Oh, I keep telling myself that I'm fine. But I spent Wednesday afternoon lying half conscious on this sofa, watching the Sherlock box sets and shoving Jaffa cakes into my mouth while mass hysteria broke out about the sun disappearing and the world literally began to end. So, I think that speaks for itself, really. <laughs> Oh. thought about calling him. Just the thought of it all ending, never having seen him again, just doesn't feel right. Oh. And I'm aware of how cliche that sentence sounds. <laughs> and yes, I did feel a little bit sick saying it out loud, but... I want to call him. I just want to tell him that I'm sorry. I just couldn't handle anything else. And I snapped. <laughs> yeah, probably won't though. That part of my life is over. I know that. And I'm fine. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm just scared that he's not going to pick up. But even if he does, how am I supposed to start a conversation like that? How? Yeah, no, absolutely not. Won't do that. Can't. <laughs> I called him. <laughs> I just figured that if this morning's prediction about these being the last few weeks of human life on Earth is correct. And, well, also the fact that every time I breathe, my insides feel like they're burning, which makes me think that it is. I can't afford to waste any more time. <laughs> he said that everyone was ignoring him after the breakup as well, which is nice. No, I mean, well, not nice. Oh, you know what I mean. He wasn't even surprised that I spent one of the most important moments of the Earth's existence passed out in front of Hounds of the Baskerville. Because once when we were together, we watched the entire thing three times in a month and spoke to each other solely in Moriarty's accent for weeks on end. <laughs> oh, oh, it turns out even the apocalypse can't kill his awful sense of humour. <laughs> he was making jokes like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. But they do make me smile. You know, he was the one that suggested that we should meet one last time. Which was so perfect. Unless he was plotting some kind of really inappropriately timed revenge. But it looked like everything was going to be all right again. But it's not quite how it went, though, because it turns out that he's back at his parents, which is the other side of the city. And literally the ground everywhere is covered in masses of ice. So the government have decided they want everyone to stay put and they've closed loads of roads. So unless one of us wants to take an hour long walk through the coldest ever recorded temperature. It looks like we're never going to see each other again. I can't quite believe it. Because I think I don't really want to. You know, I spent months moping and wallowing only to be snapped out of it for this to happen. And I can't quite help but feeling like I'm going to die never having lived. Like, what have I actually done with my life apart from make mistakes and regrets and carry them around? I'm so used to people saying to me, 
You're so young, you've got loads of time to figure it out. I don't. I thought I did, but I don't. So it's been about three weeks now um, and this morning they declared that prolonged exposure to the cold could be fatal so it's really only a matter of time. <sighs> I'm actually surprised that I've held it together for as long as I have. Not exactly known for my ability to deal with the crisis. I just hadn't really sunk in. I didn't really understand what I was going to lose, you know? I can see into the other roads, the other houses on the road, and opposite me there's this old couple that spend their time flipping through photo albums, which for some reason makes me so angry. You know, it's like, what have they got to be so miserable about? They've lived their lives. They haven't had it snatched away from them like I have. I'm never going to grow old. Um, I'm never going to do any of the things that I plan to do with my life because it's being robbed from me. And all I can do is just sit here and wait. But I'm not going to do that. I don't want my end to this to be the same as my beginning. I want to live and it's not fair that I don't have time. And Will and I have decided that we're going to spend the remaining time together, even if it is only hours. So the plan is that tomorrow we're going to drive as far as the roadblocks and then get out and meet in the middle somewhere. And I don't know what we're going to do next. And we're not sure what the cold will do to us. And we're aware that it could be fatal, but... So I better get to the end of watching my box set, eh?